his holy name. What a wonderful name. Who do you call on tonight? Think of it. Who do you call on tonight? The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you saved tonight? Is there anyone in the house tonight that has called upon the name of Jesus? The name that is above every name. Jesus. Isaiah said he was wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. The angel showed up to Mary and said you will give birth to a Savior and his name will be Jesus. And another angel said you will be called Emmanuel, God with us. How many has God with them tonight? He's wonderful, Pastor. He's awesome. He's mighty. He is the bright and morning star. What a wonderful God. Hallelujah. What a beautiful name. The name of Jesus. The name above every name. I know that in the last day when Jesus comes to get His bride, that everyone is going to see Him for who He is. The Bible says that He's going to split that eastern sky and the name will be across the banner on that white horse that says, Lord of Lord and King of Kings. And every tongue shall confess and every knee shall bow to the Lord of Lords the Lord of Glory. But I read my Bible and it says that at the name of Jesus, every tongue shall confess and every knee will bow. Whatever you're going through, whatever is coming against you, at the name of Jesus, it must bow and submit to the authority of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. How wonderful that name is tonight. Really, who do you call on? When you're up at night and there's no one to get to and, and no one to call, you can call upon the healer. You can call upon the deliverer. You can call upon the Savior. You can call upon the rock of ages. You can call upon one who will be there and stick closer to you than a brother. Whatever you may be going through, all you have to do is call upon the name of Jesus and He will be there right with you. Emmanuel, God with us, living on the inside of you, the greatest power in all of the universe, the one who spoke this universe into existence, Jesus. He was there in the beginning, and He is there in the end. The Bible tells us that when they come to open the book, they had the seven seals on it. John said there was no one worthy, and He began to weep that no one was worthy. But He heard a strong angel say, there is one who's worthy. There was one who's worthy, and it was the Lamb who was slain before the foundation of and He is the only one who is worthy of all our praise. Not the Master, not the President, not the sports stars, and all these other things. There's only one, only one who is worthy. And it's the one who died for you and died for me and shed His blood on Calvary to wash us and cleanse us and make us white as snow. Only He, only He, only one is worthy. Praise. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. 
Brother Sister Heather spoke that Sunday morning about the book and that there was no one. John, John was called up into that place and, and no one was worthy to open the book. And she spoke about that and I thought about that all week long and just blessed my soul. And I had no intentions of going here, but uh, I'd like to read this scripture before we get started, before we go to the Lord in prayer. And, and He's worthy. He's worthy. You know, it made me think, Pastor, you know, I love to praise God and I'm so amazed that He would be so good to me. Who am I but dust that He knows me. He knows the frailty of who I am and I praise Him for His love, His mercy, and His grace and for salvation. But you know, that spoke to my heart that I need to praise Him because He's worthy. He's worthy because He went to a cross and died and shed His blood and gave His body to be broken for us that He would demonstrate that love that while we were yet sinners that Christ would die for us. My God, He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised whether He does a thing for me or not. He's worthy. He's worthy. And they're around the throne crying day and night. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, holy is the Lamb. My goodness, what a wonderful God that we have. Hallelujah. If you've, if you've not said hi to your neighbor this evening, just look at your neighbor and tell them what a wonderful place it is and, and to just have a good time in the Lord this evening. We'd like to welcome some visitors tonight to Tabitha and Denver, Canada from Rockview. Uh, glad to have you with us tonight. Also, we've got Kevin and Kathy Hatfield from right here in Pineville. So we just welcome you into the house of the Lord this evening. So glad, glad that you chose to be with us tonight to worship our Lord and Savior. Before we go to the Lord in prayer, I just believe that we've already set in the atmosphere and that the Spirit of the Lord is here. I believe He's going to answer every request that's thrown His way tonight if we'll just cast those burdens upon Him. But I'm going to just take a moment, if it's okay, to read this scripture. You know, I, I, like I said, I've been thinking about this all week, Pastor, that He's simply worthy. Just simply worthy of my praise and my honor and my respect that I would lay before Him and honor Him for who He is and what He's done. And the scripture that we're talking about is in Revelation chapter 5 and it says this, And I saw in the right hand of Him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Who is worthy? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. There wasn't one worthy anywhere. You know, we esteem people so high in different things and different positions, and we think they're somebody. And a lot of times we just make them larger than what they really are. But there was no one. No one in heaven or under earth was worthy not to even look upon the book. And in verse 5 it says, And one of the elders said unto me, speaking to John, Weep not. Uh, I'm sorry, let me back up to, to verse 4. John said, And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and read the book, neither to look thereon. No one was found worthy. And then John heard this. He heard, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed thereof, and he will open the book and loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came, and he took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty four elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people of every nation and has made us unto God kings and priests and we shall reign upon the earth. Thank God. Thank God there was one who was worthy. And it was Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. He alone is worthy. And because He was worthy, we are adopted into the family of God as sons and daughters of the Most High God. 
thank God to the one who was worthy. Where would we be if he wasn't worthy? He was perfect. He was perfect in everything that he did. His love was perfect for his people that he would do what he done. Thank God he's worthy. We need to just give him a hand clap of praise and thank God that there was one who was worthy. There was one who was worthy and because of what he did, we are worthy to inherit the kingdom of God. Not by our works or our righteousness, but because of the righteousness of Christ, we can put it up on ourselves and walk worthy, covered in the blood as sons and daughters of the Most High God. He's worthy, worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've got just a couple quick announcements. February 6th at 7 p.m. We're going to have a Valentine's dinner here at the church. It's for singles, couples, don't matter. You come out and be with us and we'll fellowship and we'll have good food and we'll just enjoy each other. That's at 7 o'clock February the 6th. And if you're planning on coming, Please sign up in the back and, and let us know how many and we can get a count of who else is going to be here and have enough food. Also, Friday, Easter play practice, 530 here at the church. On the prayer list, as we come and gather around the altar tonight to, to go to God in prayer, we've got Dolores Lawrence with some health problems. Brandon Patrick needs salvation and is battling leukemia. Mr. Rife with lung disease. And Vince Smith and his kids. And if you have an unspoken request, just by a lift of hand, let's gather around this altar tonight and let's go to the one who's worthy, the one who can do whatever we need done in our lives tonight because he is the healer, he's the deliverer, he's the savior, he is the Jesus, he is all that we need, and he's the answer to every problem that we have tonight. Jesus, as you demonstrated your love, in that while we were yet a sinner, you died for us. Shed your blood on that old rugged cross so that we could be forgiven tonight. We're not perfect, but thank God we are forgiven tonight. And we're just so thankful and grateful tonight for the blood, for the power of the blood. To know that we are covered and washed in that blood. To know that the blood will sustain us and the blood will keep us. And we're just so thankful and grateful tonight for the blood. Father, we're thankful that we can come. We can come before you in the authority of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thankful that you've given us that authority. Thankful tonight that you've given us. You've given us the permission to use the name that is above every name. And given us the authority to use that name tonight. And we just want to give you praise tonight because we know that Jesus has been given the name above every name. We know tonight that if we put a name on it, you're above that name. You're above cancer. You're above tumors. You're above, you're above blood disorders and, and Lord and, and, and this and all these diseases known to man tonight. You're above arthritis, you're above sugar diabetes, and you're above above lupus, and Lord, you're above every name tonight because you've been given a name above every name. And we're just so thankful tonight that at that name we know that these things must bow before you. And tonight we give you praise. We're the thankful, Lord, to know that we are more than conquerors tonight. To know that, that we are above only and not beneath. To know that we are, are blessed and are going out, blessed and are coming in. To know, Lord, tonight that we are the head, not the tail. To know tonight that we have, as Brother Mike said, been adopted in the family of God. And to know tonight that we, that we are, we are, we are tonight born again. We are tonight sons and daughters of the Most High God. And we give you praise for that we do. Father, we want to thank you tonight. Every need on that prayer list will believe in you to move in. Every need on that prayer list will believe in Jesus. Jesus to be glorified in their lives. And healing to come. Deliverance to come. Knowing that you're the God that I know that is, is the deliverer. 
We know you're the God tonight that, that by the stripes you received on your body. You received on the healing of our body. And we're just so thankful tonight for the healing that we have in Jesus' name tonight. We thank you for your presence in this house tonight. Holy Ghost, we're thankful that you are here in our midst tonight. And we want to acknowledge our need of you. We need you in this house tonight, Holy Spirit. We need you desperately. We do. Come, help us. I pray that we can create the atmosphere that you can have liberty in in this house tonight. I pray you'll help us that we can testify of the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Jesus said you always testify of him. And tonight I'm believing, Lord, that through the praises of your people, the Holy Ghost will have right away and rule in this house tonight. Come and do in this meeting what only you can do. Meet the need of your people tonight, I pray. And we will give you praise and glory. For we ask it in Jesus' mighty name tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Wow. Praise His holy name. Sonia informed me that I give the wrong day for the Easter play practice. It's Saturday. Easter play practice is Saturday evening at 5 30. Hallelujah. How I many is happy to be in the house of the Lord tonight? God is so good, so awesome, and so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I just want to sing, read one more check out of scripture to you tonight this is what was on my heart on the way here this evening it's in psalms verse one or chapter 100 we're going to praise the lord as the uh, just here just in a second as the praise team sings a couple more songs but psalms 100 says make a joyful noise unto the lord all ye lands serve the lord with gladness come before his presence with singing know ye that the lord he is god it is he that hath made us and not we ourselves we are his people and the sheep of his pasture Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy endureth forever. His truth endures to all generations. Stand with us this evening if you can. Let's just give the Lord some worship this evening for who he is, his goodness, and his grace. When I wake up in the land of glory and with the saints I will tell.
tells us that that city there'll be no need for the sun the S-U-N because the S-O-N is going to shine bright day and night night and day for all eternity we're going to be in his glory I can't imagine what it's going to be like when I get to see him face to face and truly say how great thou art I just don't know what it's going to be like but I know it's going to be an awesome experience brother Mike something that we've never known here other than being in the spirit and having the Holy Ghost living on the inside of us bearing witness of how great He is. What an awesome God that we have. He is truly great. If you believe He's great tonight, if He showed Himself faithful in your life tonight, if He's been worthy to you tonight, then you need to just give Him a hand clap of praise because He alone, He alone is worthy of our praise. He's worthy. How great Thou art. What a day that will be when we get to stand. And He says, enter in, Thy faithful servant, well done. And we get to go through those gates into that city. What a day that'll be. What a day that'll be. You know, I get a little bit homesick. I always, and when I was young and would go to church and my grandmother and the older ones, you know, when you're little, everybody's old, but I'm not saying anybody's old. But, you know, they sang those songs. 
I'll fly away and, and the power of the blood. All those different, those old timey hymns. And you know, they, I've been to funerals, Pastor, where I've seen praise and worship so awesome and mighty. And I thought, what's it all about? But the older I get, the more I see. Yeah. This life has nothing to offer. Nothing. Paul said, I count it. My brother Mike said this last Wednesday, said that he counted it all as dung just to know the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My goodness. You know, we get caught up in this world and think of all these other things and our jobs of money, your know, different things, our people, family, and all that, but it's nothing. It's nothing. Jesus said that we're to forsake everyone, even our loved ones, for the the glory of being with Him and knowing Him and taking up that cross. He's worthy. Oh, my goodness. I just, I need a hush. He's, he's just awesome tonight. Anybody have a testimony tonight they'd like to share before the pastor? Oh, okay. Children's Church can go downstairs. I'm just going to keep you up here with us. Get, carried, get caught up and just don't know what's going on. But God is good. Thank God we've got a house that we can send our children and know that they're going to be fed the Word of God. We've got to raise up a generation that's on fire for Him. Hallelujah. Bless His holy name. Anybody have a testimony they'd like to share tonight? God being good in anybody, so it's good to see Justin here. My goodness, what a wonderful... I'm telling you, nothing like it, Justin. Keep coming, keep hearing that Word of God. God will love you and do for you what you never thought was even possible. One of our new new young Christians in the church. See anyone tonight?
Anyone else before we I believe Pastor is about ready to just jump out of his shoes right here to come give us the word. <laughs> Anyone else? I just wanted to 
person, what he does for Rick, he'll do for you. You may be facing a situation that doesn't look good, but God is your answer. If you'll call upon that name that they sang about tonight, ask him to come in and help you, he will come in and he will help you. He will change your situation. The Bible says he'll make a way where there seemeth to be no way. He is the only way. He is the one true way, the living God, the truth, the, 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 way, the way that he goes is perfect. And he'll take us that same way. What a wonderful God. Anyone else? Every year, every property, and I just give praise to the Lord. Amen. 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 Saving God. Anyone else? Let's just give God a hand clap of praise for His goodness tonight. What He's doing in this house, what He's going to do. I believe right now we might be about toenail deep in that water that the Bible talks about. I believe we can swim to work submerged if we desire it. Hallelujah. Just let God be God. Come on, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise tonight, would you? Amen. Come on, give Him a good praise tonight. All right. He's an awesome God tonight. I tell you, ain't nobody ever done you like Jesus has done you. Nobody. Ain't nobody. They may try, but they ain't ever done it. Amen. How many of you know him tonight as, as your Savior? Amen. How many of you know him tonight as your deliverer? How about your healer tonight? Uh, how about your all in all tonight? Give me one more good praise tonight. Before you can see. Praise God. Amen. Well, I tell you, he's an awesome God. I don't know what kind of God you serve tonight, but I serve an awesome God. Amen. Same yesterday, today, and forever. Same. Never changes. Amen. Now we might, but He never does. Now His methods change, but He doesn't change. He's the same. Our country boy says yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Praise God. Well, praise God. I'm glad you're here tonight. You're glad you're here? Amen. Amen. Tomorrow night, before I forget, tomorrow night at 7.30. We'll be here uh, for our, our uh, uh, basic Bible study for new converts or anybody wants to come. If you're an old convert, it don't make no never mind up. If you want to be a part of that, come on, come on, come on there tomorrow at seven thirty, and uh, we'll be downstairs. So it's it's a basic Bible study for for young Christians and for people just getting started in the Lord. And uh, if you've never been through that, it'll help you. Okay, oh Lord, you are. It'll help you. So if you want to be a part of that, be here tomorrow night at seven thirty. All right. We'll be starting tomorrow evening at 7.30. It's set up for eight lessons, eight weeks, but I've got a feeling it'll probably going to go longer than that because Juanita's kind of finally, she kind of all ended up. She talk a lot. Talk about the Word. We'll be here tomorrow at 7.30, okay? All right. You have your Bibles tonight? Amen. That's good. Got two amens. Amen. Amen. I may be talking out of, out of the Sears Roebuck catalog now if you ain't got your Bible and you want to tell you the truth or not. Go to John's Gospel, chapter number 14. And I got to go to Proverbs tonight. If I get time, I hope I'll get over there. John chapter 14 and Proverbs 15. John 14 and Proverbs 15. On your way to John, stop by Proverbs, stick your finger right there. We've got a lot of scripture covered tonight. I don't know if I get time to go all over or not, but I'm sure we'll try Okay, John chapter 14, Proverbs chapter number 15 tonight. Two Wednesday nights ago, last Wednesday night, we just had an awesome meeting here last Wednesday night. The presence of God was so real in this house last. Probably, I, I believe that it, it was probably the most powerful service as far as the presence of God was, is concerned than we've had. And this coming September will make us 20 years in this this house started 20 years. It's coming September. 
I believe this past Wednesday night was probably the most powerful presence of God in this house since we've been, since we started this ministry. And we praise Him for that. For this past Wednesday night. But the Wednesday before that, two Wednesday nights ago, we started a teaching, and I don't know how much longer we're going to go. I'll maybe wrap it up tonight, maybe not, I don't know. But we started, we entitled this, this series, I guess, Choose Life, Not Strive. Choose life, not strive. Got that? Amen. Jesus said in John chapter 14, in verse number 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Choose life, not strive. So when I say life, Jesus is the life. Jesus is the life. Choose life, Jesus, not strife. Choose life, not strife. Now stay with me just for a moment while I try to get this thing gathered up. We can tell where I'm going to. Now, when Jesus came, Jesus was total man, total God. Right? Right? Jesus was, was, was God clothed in a human body. Flesh and blood. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Jesus was total man. Now... Also, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse number 8, that God is love. God is love. All I need you to see in that is God is love. He is He is So if God is love, then the love of God becomes the greatest force in this universe. I said, if God is love, and according to His Word, God is love, then the love of God becomes the greatest force in this universe. Right? Right? God is love. So if God is love, the love of God becomes the greatest force in this universe. So the love of God is superior. It is distinguished above all others. There is no greater force. So therefore now we can say that, that, that the power of God is in the love of God. God is love. And there is no greater power than God. So we can say that the power of God is in the love of God. For God is all powerful. Right? right. Got me thus far? Right. All right. Jesus gave us commandment in John chapter 15, verse number 12. This is my commandment. Watch now. That you love one another as I have loved you. So watch now, what? Watch, what? Choose life, not strife. Choose love is what I'm talking about. Got that? Choose love. So now Jesus gives us a commandment that, that you are to love one another as I have loved you. Or in other words, we are to love as we have been loved, right? So me loving you and you loving me and we loving others is a commandment, right? It is not optional. It is a commandment. It is a commandment from the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? So my understanding of that, of that command right there, my understanding of that commandment, then my decision to walk in the love of God should not be based in how somebody else responds to my decision. Talk to me somebody. What somebody else does or how they respond doesn't have anything to do with my decision to walk in love. How you respond to my decision doesn't have any bearing on my decision to continue to walk in love. Because if I walk in love, I'm walking in the power of God because God is love. All power, God has all power. So if I remain in the, in, in the love of God, then I remain in the power of God. Right? Am I right about it? Okay, now watch that. Watch, watch. So, so, so my decision to walk in love should not be based on your decision and how you respond to my love, right? right? Now, so why is that important? Here's why it's important. John chapter 14, verse number 21. Look in your Bible. Not it's on the screen. John 14, 21. Here's why this is important. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, watch now, and will manifest myself to him. Grab that. Jesus said that he, will, that he would manifest himself to you 
If you meet the condition of John 15 and 12, which is, you shall love one another as I have loved you. If we meet that condition, Jesus gave us the promise that he would manifest himself to you. My God. He would manifest himself to you if you continue to walk in love. If you continue, if we continue to love one another as we have been loved, and believe me, you've been loved a great deal. Jesus loved you while you were yet a sinner. You have been loved a great deal by the Lord Himself. So, 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 so if we, if we, if we continue in that love, He gave us the promise that He would manifest Himself to you, right? Am I right about it? So now Jesus gives us the key now, watch, watch, to His manifest presence. His key is the key of love. So if you want to remain in contact with God, the requirement is living a lifestyle of love. Choose love. Choose life, not strife. Choose love. Watch now. Every step in love is a step toward Him. Every step out of love is a step away from Him. So if we abide in His love and always go in love and always giving out of nothing but love, we will always be in Him and under His anointing. Lord God Almighty. We will always be in Him and under His anointing. Watch now. Anything I need, present tense. Anything I need, present tense. If everything I did, past tense, was done in the spirit of love, nothing is impossible. Amen. Nothing is impossible. I said 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 nothing is impossible. Today got a call again from Kendra. Let me tell you a little bit of a story. I, I didn't come with it, but it, it's just a good place to be because it just nothing is impossible. The baby's white blood count has been up. Had infection in his body. They have the. They have no idea where it's coming from. Had no idea what to do. The baby had a had a fractured. Oh, what do you call it? There you go. That's close enough. Glory to God. Anyway, anyway, the infection. His white blood count was way up, and they couldn't. They did not know why. Now here it is today. Been born, was born Sunday morning. Today he's still there in the hospital. She called this morning. Uh, uh, Serena called this morning. She got a phone. My wife, come on, Carolyn. We're going to we're going to the Lord in prayer on my, based on Matthew eighteen nineteen. We grabbed hands and we began to pray. She come and agreed with everything I pray. I I, I got fat flat up with the devil. I'm tired of it. Devil, you've afflicted this baby long enough. Now watch now. Watch. We began. To, we come and agree on Matthew eighteen nineteen. Here's was some of my prayer. I don't know what all I prayed, but I remember some of it. But, but, but I said, I said, right now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, when that baby, when, 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 when this mommy's milk from her breast touches his lips, I command that immune system to rise up and override every infection in that body in Jesus' name. I command that infection to leave his body in the name of Jesus. This boy, this little boy just came to this world. He knows no sin. He's done no sin. He, he, he doesn't know anything about sin. That is the temple of God. I don't deny the infection, but I do deny it's right to be there. It has a right in that body. It must go in Jesus' name. We pray a little bit longer. Anyway, anyway she called a little bit later now. I called her back. She called me back a little bit later. I gave her some scriptures. I said, "Now listen, listen, Serena. You get that little. Thing. You get your little girl. You you get you, you get her, and you 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 come together." Matthew eighteen nineteen. I gave her them scriptures. And I gave her some more. I gave her uh, what Isaiah fifty three. I gave her Matthew seven eight eight uh, seven eight eight somewhere around there. I gave her First Peter two twenty four. I gave her a bunch of scriptures to go over. I said, "You write these down. You write your prayer out, and you and her gather come together."
together, grab hands together in Jesus' name, and you pray over that baby, and you speak this word over that baby. This is a spiritual warfare. It is a spiritual attack from the devil. We are not going to let this devil have this baby. This baby will live and not die and proclaim the works of God. I gave her that script out of song. I gave her a lot more with that. She began to write that prayer out. She called me back. With, oh, God. She called us back about 5 something, 5 30, 6 o'clock. She texted me back and she said, Pastor, the Lord is so good. They're getting ready to discharge our baby. He said, oh, good God Almighty. He said, he says he's getting ready to go home. I said, you better believe he's going home. Well, it made home in the name. Nothing is impossible. If everything we do is in love and everything we've done is in love, nothing is impossible. Well, glory to God. I feel like clapping on God. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The devil is alive. I said the devil is alive. Hallelujah. God is love. And the power of God is in the love of God. And if we walk in the love of God, we walk in the power of God. Nothing is impossible. Glory to God. I know you're supposed to act like he's the one who's not, but I can't help this is the way I am. Good God Almighty. What a powerful God. What an awesome God. Hallelujah. To the Lamb of God. Lord, we bless your high and holy name. Glory to God. We bless your high and holy name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, blessed be God. 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 Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. As your baby, you'd probably run around the building right now. I know I would. Yes. Hallelujah. I had myself a spell anyway. Amen. Praise God. Now let's just get back to where I need to be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Watch now. Watch. If we continue to walk, live a lifestyle of love. Watch now. Watch. 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 You and I are guaranteed His manifest presence. Yeah. It'll be with you and it'll be in you. Yeah. Yeah. We decide to live a lifestyle of love. He will manifest himself to us. Good God Almighty. You listen to me. <laughs> I'm going to say this. It may sound crazy and dumb, but I'm going to say it anyway. Do you understand that we can be in heavenly places when plowing with a mule? Amen. Do you understand that you can be in heavenly places out here on the side of the mountain working on the natural gas energy, natural gas engine for, for cabin oil? Do you understand that you can be in heavenly places what working down in a deep dark coal mine? Do you understand that you can be in heavenly places working in a pharmacy? Do you understand that you can be in heavenly places no, wherever you can be in heavenly places in a jail cell, brother, if everything you do is in love and everything you've been done is in love and you're living a lifestyle of love, you can remain in heavenly places because you can stay in contact with the God of all heaven. I'm talking about the God of all glory that will manifest himself to you. And we live the lifestyle of love. He will manifest himself to you. Amen. Good God Almighty. Amen. One step toward him is a step in love. Yes. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. And one step in love is a step toward him. Yes. And one step out of love is a what? Ah, we're going the wrong way. Girl. We're going the wrong way. Amen. You can't let anybody affect your love walk. No matter what they how they respond, you can't let them affect your love walk. Because if you are to, if you wanted to remain in contact with the God of all glory, then He said, Jesus said, I will manifest myself to you if you'll remain in your love walk. If you'll love as you have been loved. And ain't nobody love you like He's loved you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My old angry, ugly self. Glory to God. But he loved me anyway. My old rebellious, blasphemous mouth. He loved me anyway. Glory to God. My old ugly, uh, 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 lustful, ungodly thoughts. He loved me anyway. 
glory to God. He didn't love what I did. He didn't love what I said. He didn't love how I was acting. But boy, he loved me enough to die for me. He said, oh, good God. And he saw some good in me. Saw something in me I never saw in myself. Hallelujah. And he said, I'm going to love you in spite of yourself. I'm going to love you in spite of what you're doing. In spite of what you're saying. In spite of how you're acting. I'm going to love you anyway. Boy, that love finally, love finally rubbed me down one Sunday morning in, in, in 1984. It rubbed me down, man. I could not say no no longer. Finally got me. Best decision I ever, Justin, the best decision you ever made when you come to Jesus. Amen. Jason, the best decision you ever made when you come to Jesus. Amen. Jennifer, the best decision you ever made when you come to Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Best decision you ever made. <laughs> come here, lady of God. Best decision you ever made when you come to Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Best decision any of us ever made is when we decide to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And it ain't been the same sin. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a new species. Somebody he ain't never been before. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be somebody I ain't never been before. And I'm having the time of my life being somebody I ain't never been before. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Well, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All things have become new. Are you still with me? I don't know where I'm at, but I feel good going there. Glory to God. Are you still with me? All right. All right. Let's move on. Okay, now, now, he gave us his promise that he would manifest himself to those that will live a lifestyle of love. Right? Amen. Right? Amen. Here's the problem. Now, I'm more, <laughs> Lord God, I didn't let the owl ever want to. Lord God, you're see y'all. <laughs> Here's the problem. We all have an enemy, right? An adversary. Whom Peter warns us in 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil. As a roaring lion. Walking about seeking whom he may devour. Now he's not a lion. He's as a roaring lion. He can't devour everyone. But he's walking around trying to devour, devour someone. He can't devour you if you won't let him devour you. Amen. He is as, not is a, he is as a roaring lion. He's got a, he's got a loud bark, but he ain't got no bite. He's had all of his teeth pulled. As a matter of fact, if you really get down to it, the devil has all hours. He does. We just keep reminding him what's wrong with us. We just keep telling what our problem is. Oh, preach on, preach on. We end up talking more about the problem than we do about the problem song. Oh, we end up talking more about the mountain than the God that can move the mountain. <laughs> See, the devil really got all hyper. He's really dumb on the rock. We just tell him everything you know. We do. Come on, now I didn't call no names. Did I call you names? I call you by the name in this house. Now what? 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 We all know we have an enemy tonight, right? Amen. He is our adversary. He is Satan himself. All right, we got that? And we all know that our adversary, the devil, he does not want, what's now? He does not want us to have a successful marriage. He doesn't want us to have strong relationship built on love. Amen. He doesn't want us, he does not want you and I to have a successful church. Amen. He doesn't want you to be successful on your job. Amen. He does not want us to be successful in our relationships. Amen. He wants this to disrupt our love walk. Amen. He does not want us walking in harmony. So there are enemies of love. 
One of the primary enemies to love is strife. Amen. Pow, man, I done shot a holy cow tonight. <laughs> One of our primary enemies to love, God is love. Yes. When you're walking in the love of God, you're walking in the power of God. But there's an enemy to our love. One of the primary enemies to our love, walk, is strive. Hey, wait a little while now. We've got to dig up some ground here. We've got to dig up. We've got to kill some holy cows here as we go. All right? Can we do that? I know God it loaded up, so I can go ahead and shoot them. All right? Watch now. Watch. One of the things that will take you from God. And from his manifest presence is strife. Amen. One of the quickest things that will take you from that is strife. Amen. Now, let's get to understand what strife is on the screen. Strife is. Strife means vigorous or bitter conflict, discord, and antagonism to quarrel. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Struggle or clash. Competitions, rivalry, provocation. Damn. You gotta you got you gotta have a little bit of understanding what, what strife really meant, what, what, what it really means, what, what we're dealing with, all right? Two Wednesday nights ago we went to Numbers chapter twenty. I'm not gonna go back there. In Numbers chapter twenty, we saw two weeks ago how that strife kept Moses from taking the children of Israel into the promised land. Strife did that. In Numbers chapter 20, verse number 13, Scripture says there that this is, this is the water of Meribeth, because the children of Israel strove, contended with the Lord, and He was sanctified about hallowed among them. Watch now. The waters of Meribeth. Meribeth in the Hebrew means strife. So they were at the waters of strife. In other words, when they got, when they got to this certain place, they got into strife. They got into a quarrel. They got into a conflict. They got into discord. And it, it, listen, listen to what we're saying. And the enemy of strife, watch now, what? Man, man, this is serious. This is a powerful enemy that we're battling right now that we really don't realize what, what it's all about. Yeah. This, 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 this enemy of strife stopped Moses from taking the children of Israel over into their promised land, their physical promised land. Watch. That same strife, that same enemy of strife will hinder you and it will hinder me from entering into our spiritual promised land. It will hinder us from, from Him manifesting His presence in our lives. Anywhere you have the spirit of strife, woo, woo, you've got a powerful demon at work. You've got a powerful spirit at work. And sometimes we feed the fire. Oh, Jesus, I'm getting all messed up now. We're all shouting down, we're going to all cry for a while. Because we're all, we're all, let me rephrase that. No, I'm going to say that. Thank you. We all have been or are guilty of allowing this spirit to rob us of the blessing and the, and the manifest presence of God in our lives. Come on, man, because we've all been there. I'll tell you one thing. I know you, if you're here tonight married, I know you've been there. <laughs> well, everybody can't be perfect like me. I mean, you, my God, I mean, like this, me and my wife have been married over 40 some years. We, well, we ain't. Yeah, we have too. We've all been there, done that, right? Wore the hat, off t-shirt. We've all allowed that spirit to come into our lives at one time or another. It may not be in your home, it may be on your job. Maybe at Walmart. In the bean aisle of all places. Maybe at the post office when you got that bill you didn't know. Oh God! Talk to me, somebody. Are you still with me? Yeah. Strife causes division. Love brings unity. 
What we want is unity. What we don't want is division. Strife causes division. Love ushers in unity. And when we allow strife to control us, we cause division. And division causes disharmony. Ah, one step in love is a step toward His presence. One step out of love is a step away from His presence. I'm still talking about choose life, not strife. That's what I'm still talking about. In James 3 and 16, let me hear you did. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Where there is envy, where there is jealousy and strife, contention, quarreling, rivalry, selfish ambitions, there is confusion in every evil work. According to that verse, right there, just out of James. Listen, when strife gets in, it opens the door to every evil work. That's why it tells us, that's why, that's why the word tells us, to, you know, to not let the sun go down upon your anger. I, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, and I'm not just going to mention it, go on. That's why it's important when a husband and wife has a quarrel. I'll say a quarrel, it sounds a little bit easier than strive. When, when they're fussing and cussing one another, yeah, on. don't go to bed. Right. Like that. Yeah, sure. If you do, you have just opened the door for confusion and every evil work. And while you're asleep, ooh, I said, boy, I tell you, it's got quiet on the church house mouth. Yeah. While you're asleep, Demons begin to work. Now, I'm telling you right now, you're going to hear the preacher. Evil spirits begin to work because we just opened the door up for the enemy to come in and take strife and bring chaos, confusion, and every evil work into our home while we're fast asleep. Devils at work. Come on, church. I'm talking to you right now. I, I, know, I know people don't believe me, but it, it is a fact of the Word of God. Amen. It's real stuff, boy. That's why we got to stay in our love walk. Because we'll stay in our love walk. He'll manifest his presence to us, and ain't no devil can get in the door. Shut the devil, shut the door, keep the devil out. Amen. 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 Am I making any sense? Amen. 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 Send your love gift to Buck 984. Buck we've seen <laughs> Amen. You still with me? Amen. Amen. Stay with me now, just a little while. Now. Can you see? Can you see why enemy? What why strife is an enemy to love? Just that little bit. Can you see? Amen. Strife opens the door to the devil, and it gives him a license to bring confusion and every evil work into our lives. It takes us out of our love walk. It takes us from God. We don't want to go from God. We want to go to God, right? That's why the enemy is always pushing and tempting us to argue and to quarrel. And to get into conflict with one another. And get offended at one another. And become critical of one another. Come on somebody. It opens it opens Satan. It gives him access to us, to our lives. Amen. Satan doesn't want us to enjoy the blessing. That is in Christ Jesus. That comes when you choose life, not strife. Hallelujah. And we stay in our love walk. So here it is. Make a quality decision. Close the door on strife. Refuse to argue with people. Refuse to quarrel to you with your spouse. Refuse to fight back when people criticize you or wrong you. Suffer the wrong. Stay out of strife. Determine to respond in love. Take Listen, take no account of evil done to you, the Bible says. Stay out of strife. Do whatever you've got to do to stay out of strife. Why not render me your wrong? They're going about your business. Oh no, no, they cuss me, I'm gonna cuss them. <laughs> oh no. They call me a blank and blank blank. <laughs> and a blank and blank blank. And Jesus said, turn the other cheek. Well I did, but he didn't tell me what to do when I when, when, after I turned the other cheek. <laughs> well, slap them back, Lord, I gotta get it over. Stay out of strife. Amen. If you want him to manifest himself to you, stay out of strife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stay out of strife. Amen. The argument is not worth it. No, 
Who comes out on top is not worth it because both of us are going to lose. Talk to me, somebody. Come on. Come on. This is, this, this is a real demon. This is a real devil we're battling here. Now, a lot of folks don't, they don't, they don't act like, man, he ain't talking. Man. Yeah, I am too, but I just clip your little angelic wings off. You, you just, might, I'm going to beat them horns down out of your head here. <laughs> we all fall into this trap set by the enemy. Because he does not want us to be successful in every area of our life. He doesn't want you to enjoy the blessing. And he'll provoke you and do everything that he possibly can. He'll use whoever he can against you, whatever he can, whatever circumstance or situation or person, people, place or thing, he can to use you, to provoke you, to get you into strife with somebody. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He likes to use church people, church folk. Like you doing people, church folk. Amen. Can I have about 10 minutes? Amen. Can I have 20 minutes? Amen. Can I have 22 minutes? Amen. Can I have 10 more minutes? I'm going to suck you in for 20 here in a minute. Let me, let me go over just a few scriptures, all right? I'm not going to be tall enough. What's it? What? Why are you going to do that for right in the middle of where I'm going? Now you're going to mess me up. I, you ain't going to get, I ain't got time, you didn't give me time to study for it. How am I supposed to, I'm going to post that, post that, go ahead. Here's the argument. If it ever, ever happened, yeah. evidently not because you keep wanting more and more. Yeah. We're supposed to be happy. Supposed to be happy, heavenly and holy. Yeah. What happened to us? I don't know. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. We ought to be happy. Happy, happy, happy. So, and Christian Brother Robinson would say, happy, 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 happy. Amen. Happy, heavenly, holy, who was there. Amen. I don't know what happened to us to it. I, I, I told these people here for years. I tell them, on, I, to, to, on Saturday night, when you go to bed, go to bed with a coat rack in your mouth, and so when you come to church, you'll be have a smile on your face. All right, now, notice these scriptures right quick. All right, can I, can I give you just a few? I go to Proverbs chapter 15. Man, I, I got a lot of scriptures here, and I know that I'm not going to get to all of them, but I'll, give me just a few minutes, and I'll get you out there. All right? Notice, notice how strife is an enemy to love in these scriptures. I want you to watch this now. What? Watch what happens when we give way to the spirit of strife. Notice, notice how this enemy does. All right? Are you in Proverbs? Be good to get your Bible in Proverbs. That way you can take a pencil and an ink pen or something and mark in scriptures right there. If not, they're on the screen right there. Proverbs chapter 15, verse number 18. Here we go. 15, 18. A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. Wow. Listen. Listen to the, to the New American Standard Bible, NASB. Look at it. A hot-tempered man stirs up strife, but the slow to anger calms a dispute. Are you hot-tempered? Amen. Hot tamale. <laughs> hot, 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 hot. Touchy, 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 touchy. Amen. A hot, a hot, a hot-tempered man or woman. Stirs up strife. <laughs> Some of y'all used to fight in the drop of a hat. Amen. Some of you still do. <laughs> a hot tempered man gonna stir that gonna stir that spirit up. A hot tempered woman gonna stir it up. But if you got somebody in the midst of those two that is that, that is slow to anger. He calms. He calms. He calms to the spirit. Amen. <laughs> Look at verse number one, Proverbs 15, verse number one. Look at it. Watch it. I like it. A soft answer, a gentle answer, turneth away wrath. But grievous words, harsh words, stir up anger. Wow. Do you understand that you can shut an argument down? You can shut the spirit of strife down. Wow. Amen. By a soft answer. Or you can fuel it 
with your words or the tone of your voice. That's, <laughs> it ain't what you say, but it's how you say it. <laughs> Anybody ever hear that? I didn't mind what you said, it's how you said it. <laughs> here we go now, here we go. Uh, that's it. <laughs> but a soft answer will shut strife down. Amen. If you go over here, right over there, they burn a couple over here, look at we went fly. A soft answer. <laughs> it'll shut it down, baby. Tell you why too. Don't worry if that's if you hear that. I know she called me in my trouble. <laughs> Are you still with me? Amen. You can shut it down. I said you, I said you can shut it down. I said you can shut it down. James chapter 1 verse 19 and 20. James said, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. You probably ain't got that on the screen. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Be slow to speak, slow to wrath. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 17. Now look at it. Chapter 17. A couple chapters over. Verse number 14. 1714. The beginning, oh I like, yeah, this I like this one. Huh? The beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water. Therefore leave off contention before it melted, before it be melted, meddled with. Wow. Notice the New American Standard about what it said. The beginning, look at this, man. Look at this. The beginning of strife is like letting out water. Picture that. Picture that a tub of water. And you pull the stopper. The beginning of the strife is like letting out water, so abandon the quarrel before it leaks out. Wow. Amen. Well, I got one amen out of that, glory to God. Picture that. Notice, notice the big word, the beginning. The beginning is, it ain't got a hope yet. It's just starting. Oh, uh, y'all ain't wanting to go meet now. I go that we done took a shout out of now, glory to God. The beginning, it ain't got started yet. But it's getting raised on. The beginning of strife is like letting out water. Wow. Amen. But if you'll abandon the quarrel before it leaks out, strife can't get in the door. The enemy can't get in the door. You remain in your love walk and he'll manifest his presence to you. And you whoop a devil every time. Amen. Anybody feel good after you do the Jesus thing? Amen. Uh, well, I got to, well, some of y'all just don't want to participate tonight at all. I feel good by my, I feel good myself when I do the Jesus thing. Yeah. I do. Yeah. When, when, when my wife jumped on me, I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I feel good about myself. Man, praise God. Are you still with me? Watch that. What? What? Hear it here, here again. Watch that. What? Proverbs chapter number 20. Verse number 3. Proverbs 20 and 3. I'm leaving out some of these. I don't want to, but I've done this. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife. But every every fool will be meddling. Hmm. Huh. New American Standard says any fool will quarrel. <laughs> I didn't say that Bible did. Any fool will quarrel. <laughs> oh Jesus, we was doing so good. What happened? <laughs> Where did we go wrong tonight? Y'all gonna have to help me and let me figure out where I took the wrong turn at. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Proverbs 26 and 17. Let me grab you that right quick. 26 and 17. I ain't gonna get out of proverb. We done flunked the test here and ain't got out of proverb yet. Verse 17. He that passeth by and meddleth with strife, belong ye not to him, nosy. <coughs> Is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. What happens when you take a dog by the ears? Get bit. Well, <laughs> Amplified says this. 
He who passing by stops to meddle with strife that is none of his business. <laughs> it's one who takes a dog by the ears. Okay, what you say, that's funny. I used to kid, I kid, I kid a lot. I used to and still do. I get in trouble for it sometimes too. This time I got in trouble for it. It's when, when I was working and, and uh, we used to have to take our, our trucks over to Wells, over the garage over the Wells to get worked on. Our company had the garage over the mechanics over there. That's where we went to get our trucks worked on. And I know that boy that, that was cheap, that was a head mechanic over there. And one day I asked him, I was just kidding with him. I mean, he knows he knows his kid, but he, he I lost the words after he said what he said. I said, I won't call him by his name in case he hears this on there. He'll come, he'll come with me now. I said, how come your nose is so big? He looked at me and said, because I don't stick in other people's business. Okay. Okay. The time we meddle, well, we have no business meddling. <laughs> Did we not? <laughs> and, 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 and the writer says it's, it's like one that takes a dog by the ears. You take a dog by the ears, that dog got a mean trick in him, he'll eat you up. You'll get bit. And that's what happens when we begin to meddle in strife. It's none of our business. You'll end up getting bit. So keep your nose out of other people's business. Let it run. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Wait a minute, Joanna. What did you say? Yeah, ain't got no dog in that fight. Yeah. Yeah, that's also what they mean. If you, <laughs> if you go to bed with the dogs, you'll get up with the fleas, too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me go through Proverbs right quick. Proverbs 28, 25. For Proverbs 28, 25. Hurry. No, drop down to verse 20. Proverbs 26 and 20. Don't go over there yet. But verse 20, Martin. Verse 20. Watch this say. Yeah, here it is. My God, that's a good one. Where no wood is, then the, the, the fire goeth out. So why there is no season. Season. If it ain't got no wood, it can't burn. Fire go out. Woo! Uh-oh. That means if they cuss you, shut your mouth. Don't throw, don't throw no fire on the wood. I mean, don't throw no wood on the fire. No fire on the wood either. Fire will go out if it ain't got no wood. Right? Strife will stop if it ain't being fed. Boy, this is good stuff. Thank God Almighty. Hallelujah. My wife ain't up here. She down children. I could have got her saved tonight. Listen, be gone. Man, she's missing out on all this. What's wrong with her? <laughs> Proverbs 28, 25. Look at verse 25. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife, but he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. New American Standard Bible says, an arrogant man, a proud man stirs up strife, but he who trusts in the Lord will prosper. Amen. Proverbs 29, 22. New American Standard Bible says this, an angry man stirs up strife, and a hot-tempered man Abounds in transgressions. Heard them hot tempered men again. Proverbs 30, 33, New American Standard Bible. For the churning of milk produces butter. Yeah. Yeah. Does don't. Yeah. Old timers know about churning that butter. Tur yeah. Or churning that milk to make butter. And the pressing the nose br brings blood. Now, if you don't believe that at work, let me press your nose. <laughs> the blood will come out of that. Every time it'll come out of that. So the churning of anger. The churning of anger produces. Wow. Boy, we're all messed up, ain't we? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Is that right? Is that right? Can I have a couple more scriptures and I'm done? I am anyway. Strife brings division among the disciples. What? What, what, what's happened? what? what did the disciples? In Luke 22 and 24, Martin, here we go. And there was also strife among them, which, which of them should be, here's what they were fussing about, which one of them would be accounted the greatest. Yeah, yeah. And because, because they started that junk, strife came in between the disciples. Yeah. 
in one of the Gospels, they could not cast out the demon of one young boy because before that they were in an argument of who was the greatest. Strife is no place, the church has no place, is no place for strife. Brothers and sisters, we have no place for strife. It will stop the flow of the Spirit. It will stop the flow of healing. It will stop the flow of what God intended to do in the body of Christ if strife is in the house. So put strife out of the house. Let's choose life and not strife. Oh, praise God, preacher. You make a rhyme every time. I knew you were good so good. Watch now. What? What? Romans chapter 13, verse 13. Hurry. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Not in writing, drunkenness, not in chambering, and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Oh, let us walk honestly, soberly. Can't do that, walking in strife, right? First Corinthians chapter 3, Mark, right quick. Paul said, I, brethren, cannot speak to you as in the spiritual, but as in the carnal, even as in the babes in Christ. He said, I fed you with milk, not with meat, but hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. Verse 3. For you are yet carnal, fleshly. For whereas there is among you, this is in the church now. First church, this is in the, in the church at Corinth. Had all the gifts of the Spirit operating. I mean, they're talking in tongues, had a word of wisdom, word of knowledge, give, I mean, to get the healings and to get the miracles, all that work in the house of God. But he said, there's strife and divisions, and you are carnal, and you're walking as mere men. You're fleshly. Yeah. If we have strife in us, we are yet carnal, fleshly. Amen. Preach on, preacher. Okay, I'll go one more. Marty, give me the next one up here. Galatians chapter 5, verse number 20. Paul talking about it in, in, Galatians, in, in the church of Galatia. A doctor of witchcraft, hatred, variance, mutant, 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 mutant. Yeah, rap, strife, seditions, and heresies. All. Go, go on, go on to the next one. Go on to the next one. Philippians 2 and 3. Let nothing be done in strife or vainglory. Can't, can't nothing be done in that. But in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Next one. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 7. Ah. You husband likewise live here, here, here to watch you. Live with your wives in an understanding way, as with a weaker vessel, since she is a woman. And grant her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life, so that your prayers be not. That's what happens inside the home when husbands and wife are in strife. Your prayers are hindered. The blessing is ceased until strife is dealt with and healed and repented of. Apologies made, restitutions made, and now your prayers can once again be heard. As long as there's strife, your prayers will be hindered. Wow. Strife is one of the, I didn't go back to Galatians, but it's one of the 19 works of the flesh. Strife is one of the 19 works of the flesh. Amen. Amen. My mouth is dry and I could not pronounce one word. Time to move on. Now I'm done with this, with this point. Choose life. That's right. Amen. Daniel you love one. Daniel you love one. Put the devil out. Put the devil out. Can you love one? Got it? Got it? Did you receive it? Did you get it? Give the Lord a good hand cap of praise for his word tonight. Amen. Praise God. I rushed through that. Praise God. I got it out anyway. Amen. Amen. Choose life, not Amen. So now, that means, all right, when you go home, Sister Breeze, just as soon as you get the door with him, slap him right in the mouth, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Praise God. All right, tomorrow evening at 7 30. Now, don't forget, if you, if you want to be here tomorrow evening, come on. Come on, we'll take all of it. We'll just come upstairs and do it. You don't make a bit of fun. Amen. All right. Regina, you got, are you, are you, uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Are you ready? Stand with me all over there. Praise God. Man, I appreciate all of you coming. I trust you got something right from the Word. I pray you have. I pray you do. I pray you do. I hope you do. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Listen, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to help you. Amen. Amen. If I'm going to hurt you, I'm going to stay home.
So what do I have to do? And I have to with you. I'm here to help you. I'm not here to hurt you. This will help us. This will help us. This will keep the blessing flowing. This will keep the power of God working in our life. Because we're walking in love with God. Amen. Stay in your love walk. Stay in your love walk. Not worth getting out of your love walk. Amen. Amen. Raise your hands for the blessing all over the house. Would you raise your hands for the blessing all over the house? Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you His peace. May His favor follow you throughout the remainder of this week. Father, these are the best people this side of heaven. Bless them throughout the remainder of this week. Bring them back this coming Sunday morning with expectation up in their, upon their spirit. Looking, trusting, believing for a divine move of God in their life. We love you. We bless you. We praise you. Now bless these your people in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless your heart. Thank you for coming tonight, folks. Show yourself